Welcome everyone, my name is Matt, I'll be facilitating today's meeting. Um, thank you very much for coming and taking the time out of your schedule to uh, help us out today. I'm, I'm sorry Elizabeth McLafferty, but known as Betty, and I've been on this committee for a couple of years now. I'm Bridget Monroe Hobbs, I'm the manager of community development for the aging and inclusion at Marginal City Council. My name is Tony Williams, I'm a member of the local community. Okay. 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 I'm Sayata Jordana, I'm the community development manager for the Hi, I'm Martin Lachlan, I'm a member of the Older Persons Reference Group. I'm Linda Fry and Ditto. <laughs> I'm Robert Young, Ditto. <laughs> John Miles and I am also one of those. Ditto, that'd be special. Linda, Essie, and I'm also a member. Oh, Peter, John Miles, and I'm also We're also we're filming today. Uh, the purpose for that is actually there's some of the discussions here today. Uh, there'll be people who'll be missing out on those discussions and we thought this might be a good way to extend uh, the information and allow people to uh, watch uh, parts of this meeting uh, on demand later on. Uh, is, is there anyone who's uncomfortable being filmed? Because we can kind of keep you out of shot if we need to. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. my Libby on. No. She wants some wide know. shots. I no, it was a slim right. shot. Without further ado, I might hand over to Bridget, who's um, Head of Aged Care Services, just to highlight the changes uh, mm -hmm. that we're expecting with uh, the new CHSP, mm -hmm. uh, and also some of the issues and challenges that uh, we face uh, with that new uh, regime. So. so today is really to get your views around, we know that the aged care service system is changing, so what used to be the home and community care program doesn't exist anymore, and we have the Commonwealth Home Support Program. Um, we currently have funding that's agreed to until the 30th of June 2019, and that means we get block funded, so that funding comes to local government and then we deliver those in-home services. The Commonwealth has recently announced that it will extend out that funding until 2020, but it will be a new arrangement and we don't know what that new arrangement is as yet. So the aim of the Commonwealth Home Support Program is to assist older people to live as independently as possible as they can within the community and to have choice and control over the services that they, they receive. Um, it aims to create a nationally consistent aged care service system. So at the moment, the aged care service system looks different in different states. And the aim is that it's the same nationally. So what you receive in Melbourne is similar to what you receive in, in Sydney. Um, services are for people who are 65 years and over, um, unless you're Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander, in terms of it's 50 years and over. Um, to receive services, and some of you have already experienced this, is you, for referral must be made through to My Age Care. So referrals used to come directly through to local government, they don't anymore, they come through the My Age Care portal, and then My Age Care determines what someone's needs are and whether they require assessment or whether they can go straight to, through to service delivery. <coughs> so like I said before, the funding used to come to the service provider. All the evidence suggests and all the documentation suggests that that will change post-2020 in terms of the funding will go to individuals, so it will go to the older person, and the older person will have choice and control over where they receive their services from. So that's why local governments are starting to have these conversations, because that changes things in terms of how we deliver our services. Um, our current business model is based on the fact that we receive that funding, that block funding, and we can work out how much service individuals need, and we also have a very stable workforce as well. We know that we currently have 8,004 people living in the city of Mabranong who are 65 years and over. And we know that 2,245 of those people require assistance with core activities, so require assistance in terms of their daily living. And currently at Council we have 1,129 people aged 65 years and over who receive our in-home services. So we're only servicing a very, very small part of our big aged care community. 
So from council we provide a regional assessment service, so that's what I was talking about before when the referral goes through to My Aged Care. If My Aged Care determine that you need a, an in-home assessment, that referral comes through to local government and one of Ben's team will come out and visit you in the home and determine what kind of services and supports you need and then link you into those services and supports. And we also have a community support team, so they actually deliver the in-home support, so that's Home care, personal care, respite care, home maintenance. We also have a delivered meals program and we also have social support programs as well for older people. Some of you have received some of these services recently. Some of you are in receipt of them. One of the things that the change brings about is that people will have choice over where they receive their services from. So rather than local government being the primary deliverer of services, there will be a number of providers out there where you can receive those services from. One of the tricky things for local government is if the funding goes to individuals, is it actually costs us a lot of money per hour um, to deliver the services. And so if you've got a bucket of money and you want to get the best bag for your buck, mm. you may not come to local government. For Especially your not for home maintenance. <laughs> not for home maintenance, no. Um, because of the cost of, of service. Would it be fair to say that council delivered and perhaps um, NGO delivered type services are going to bear or may, if they continue to deliver services, bear a, 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 a huge uh, cost whack. Whereas then there's the new providers that supposedly are entering and they're going to be undercutting you from the start. You know, obviously they're going to want to survive and make profits and so on. Mm. So yeah. is, that, is that a tension that's already emerging? Or so there, there are other providers. So yeah. what we know within the city of Maranong, we're an inner city council, we know that there are a number of established providers out there already in yeah. existence. So I don't imagine we'll see many new ones. We may. We'll mm -hmm. definitely see them in the National Disability Insurance Scheme, I think, but maybe not so much in the aged care because we have a number of established providers. Mm -hmm. um, and based on their business models and their structures, they are able to get closer to the funding per hour. The questions we've been asking the community are, what do you find um, most meaningful about local government services? Is it the fact that someone comes in and, and vacuums your floor every fortnight for an hour and a half? Or are there other things that local government or council could be doing that would be much more meaningful than that? Um, so it, you know, I'd be really interested to find out that as well, that it, you know, in the absence of service delivery, and I don't know what decision council will make, that's a decision that council will make next year. Um, but it's a challenge that all local governments are facing because of the aged care reforms. But if, if we weren't in the business of service delivery, what is it that what people would like council to do? Is it being that, um, advocate. that advocate or that broker and providing support in negotiating or navigating the service system? What if, what's the role that would give that yeah, assurance that, okay, the system's changed, but we know we can still go to local government for this, this and this? So in terms of where to from here, um, so today we'll be looking at um, developing your feedback uh, for Council uh, and throughout the rest of 2017, Council will be evaluating its, its role in this space. As I understand, no decisions have been made at this point, it's, it's still a, a carte blanche. Um, and there'll be discussions with the Council Executive and Councillors in early 2018, where they'll start to build up their understanding of the, uh, the direction that the community aspires to. Uh, and then by about mid-2018, uh, we'll be reporting back to the community on, on, a, on a draft direction, mm -hmm. as I understand. So we, we got some uh, feedback through the, the postcard survey, and this is ostensibly kind of the general themes that we got from the 135-odd responses. Um, so virtually half of responses said, don't change anything, continue services as they are, we like it. Um, about a, a third, this uh, wedge here, said we want to improve or extend the existing services. And it was about 12% that sort of said, 
I have no idea what this is about. Um, I'm not sure. I wasn't unaware of the change. Surprised it's only twelve. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you might say that, you know, of the people who don't understand the change, they probably would say, well, just continue services. Whatever you're doing, I don't. I'm not going to deep dive into it. But whatever you you're doing, just keep on going. So let's talk strategy for this local government. Um, so just quickly, half feedback saying don't change anything. Uh, Twelve percent, or then probably even more, probably saying we don't really know what this is about. Um, a third saying improve or extend services. Of that third, I understand uh, more than sixty percent are wanting to extend the services. That's what they mean by improve. So do more things. Yeah, and one council to do it. And one council to do it. We'll just yeah. want it to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sixteen percent are saying improve the performance of those services from a kind of administrative perspective. Longer hours probably. Longer hours, mm -hmm. better communication, those sorts of things. Uh, we've got 11% on uh, defining the role of uh, Maribyrnong City Council. 6% uh, on infrastructure, which we thought was maybe a little bit on the low side. We thought that would be yeah. play a more active role in terms of improving uh, local amenity. Um, uh, communication uh, at five percent and um, well lower rates, <laughs> less taxes. Um, well, that would have been high. Is that only six percent? Come on. Look at the robot. <laughs> <laughs> My God. It was a question very targeted. Yeah. 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 So more services for maintenance around the house, yeah. lawns, repairs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that resonates for you guys. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, more community outings. Mm -hmm. you know. That's, yeah, that's the social bit again. Yeah. One of the issues too is that, one well, on the positive side, because we're all talking about the, maybe the negatives, uh, because individual councils provide different services and you always tend to hear about the yeah. ones that do more um, you know it's probably a good thing that it's going to be a commonly funded thing where everybody is the same so the information that we get or we will get even if it's fairly poor will be general and will apply to everyone because I know for instance that some councils actually wash windows once a, once a year, you know, some of them will, yeah, so then there, there are things that, you know, that <laughs> I think in our case somebody would laugh at you if you suggested that. So it's, um, yeah, it's, once it's general and everybody is the same or the same sort of funding, then that, I think, is a good thing. So it forces a, a even playing field. Yes, well. yeah. And the information you get is information that can be applied to you, you know. Because even if individual councils could add extra services from their own funding, so it still yeah. might Which not be do. even. Which they do, yeah. yeah. And, and they could also still, you know, with, with my little package, I'd love to get my windows done every quarter. So, you know, I could still choose if, if, if <coughs> that it, that's, that's where I spend it rather than yeah. Yeah, whatever. So, there is a thing about I'm that. I'm really concerned about some of the clients who sometimes in their old age become very parsimonious and actually don't want to pay. Now, what are you going to do about that? And are they going to actually have to handle, I'm the sort of person, you know, Margaret's the, the, the broader picture. I've always worked at the coalface. So I know the nitty gritty stuff, the small stuff. And I sweat the small stuff. You know, where's the money gonna go? And are you supposed to, on top of everything else, handle that as well? Yeah, yeah. And exactly. who's going to do it? And, really oh, and you know, and you do you hand it over to your nephew and he then takes the money and, and runs? Oh, yeah, well, no. uh, uh, just full of minefield. Yeah. Minefield. And it goes to the point that was raised earlier about uh, as people are entering into the older, uh, the twilight years, the capability of making these sorts of decisions yeah. And, yeah. and so forth. Very scary. Um, we also got feedback, we're not informed enough, I don't even know what this is about, uh, what aged care offers, so there's a, you know, communication. Uh, barrier or blockage somewhere. Um, some people are unaware of 
what they're entitled to, perhaps? Mm -hmm. I, I put that down to a lot of the role of the uh, GP in the community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that, that, that seems to me, that, that, it's not council's role, it's uh, GPs. GPs get extra funding for doing you know, a health check of me yeah. every year or so. Yeah. Out to 65. Oh, they yeah. nurse, they got the dirt, and yeah. they <coughs> ride it off, they yeah. get the new BMW, all of that. <laughs> so really, Pay for I mean, that's not council's business. Yeah. You know, the point of call, when you need a personal assistance, like for physical and mobility issues, well, you're obviously being involved in some of the community health medical system, yes. mental and, health, and that's the, the yes, pathway. Do, council should not need to get into that because that's all diagnostic. Mm. It's clinical, you know. Um, but that that to me is the pathway, uh, and the council shouldn't feel uh, threatened or you know pressured into that. Don't. Push that back to the Commonwealth <laughs> so I can move that somewhere else. But that's why I always yeah. take our booklets to my GP. Yeah. Yeah. So they're there at least, you know, and people can pick them up all their way. I mean, I only found out about it all when Mum's in hospital and got a package to go home, and they said to me, when this is finished, then um, the council can take over and gave me the contact details on when the council came. And I was just amazed how much support there was. I had no idea there was any support. I was just going to do it by myself. And it was just such a great relief that there was all these services so that having mum living with me is not a burden. Mm. And I can still go to work. I can still go and do my things. Yeah. And it's the, it's the showering, and, but it's also taking her to the community centre three times a week so she can be people her own age and I can go out and do my own thing. Mm. <laughs> um, but... Um, that's what is great because it's the same people who come and shower her who take her there or who's at the TV centre so she's mm. familiar with all the faces yeah. um, and for me that's why I said oh, don't change it, it's great yeah, for me, yeah. you know, yeah. it's great yeah. for her and it's great for me. And it's a moments like this you realise how great local government is. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. exactly. I mean, yeah. I can tell you know, my friends that awesome I can't believe how much support there was out there. Mm. Yeah. And I didn't need to know about it before. No. Yeah, and that's it. it. You don't look it up. Yeah, yeah. I didn't need, need to know to. about it. You know, I was told at the right time. That's how it works. Yeah. We work on a need to know basis. Yeah. 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 That's how our brain <laughs> takes in the information. We're going to go through a set of a series of questions. Um, around what we've just learnt today and what we've been discussing. Um, the first set of questions are around what do we think the greatest opportunities are with this systemic change uh, for council and what are the greatest risks uh, with this change for council. Okay, so this is just a bit of a, a risk assessment as it were from you guys. To do this I was hoping we could break into smaller groups. Uh, so this one we actually we're going to continue kind of reflecting on uh, what we've uh, discussed today, but this time we're going to I'd like everyone um, around each group to uh, state one or two things they've learned just from today's meeting about uh, hearing from others' perspectives, um, hearing from uh, Bridget and uh, her insights. So if you grab a fresh piece of paper. Um, given everything you've heard today, what is something that each of us have learned? I'll give you another sort of five, five or so minutes on that one. next question, uh, I was hoping each group might formulate two to three statements that answer that respond to the question, what role does council have in supporting the CHSP, the role out of this? So this is really the, kind of the guts of the, uh, the uh, feedback process, is to actually try and, given everything you've discussed, risks, opportunities, learnings and insights, uh, what might be a statement of our role uh, for council under this new regime? And you might 
there might be a couple of statements. So I'm looking for two to three statements responding to this question. I'm going to give you a little bit longer. We'll give you about 10, 10 minutes on that because um, there might be a bit of wordsmithing involved um, and a bit of just clarifying some certain ideas. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll hand over to you. And if you have any questions or would like to just kind of discuss the task further, just uh, raise your hand. I'm happy to come over and help out. What I might do is just do a quick, um, I wouldn't mind just someone from each group just um, talking through that final piece around statements of role. Um, I might start with this group over here. Okay. My role as council in supporting the CHSP, coordinating the entire project relevantly to supply maximum support to the present and future aged community in the city of Maribyrnong. I don't know whether it actually addresses that question, but anyway. Okay. A continuous support role within the community in regards to the viability of NGVs, bracketed to link arms <coughs> and encourage, it's a bit corny, to link arms and encourage the sharing of service delivery. Council needs to manage and support the transition and ongoing support with residents, understanding and management of services and providers based on needs, but not on, only on financial consideration, or not on financial consideration totally. Use other council funds, i.e. parking funds, etc. <laughs> that's, that's, relevant that's relevant use. That's relevant use. Excellent. That's it. Did that address it? it? That's 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 I think that's great. Oh, good. That's really good. well done. Can you repeat that back, please? <laughs> 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 it's all right, it's down there in words. So I, I heard, um, I heard um, yeah. a coordinating planning role. Yeah. Um, I heard a uh, continuous support for the uh, private and not-for-profit sector and linking arms and making sure we're getting the most yeah. out of that. And also heard, uh, managing the transition uh, from one system to the other, yeah. with particular reference to focusing on needs, yeah. not, uh, yeah. not, not yeah. finances. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was and older very, well, very sharp. Yeah. Thank you. Well done, guys. Uh, this, this group over here. A little bit more short and concise. <laughs> 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 you like to waffle? <laughs> Provide information to um, residents, probably from 50 onwards. The 50 year olds are probably in the middle of trying to look after their aged parents. Okay. Yes, alright. Uh, fill the gap with services not provided by service providers for profit or not for profit. Great. So, um, uh, provide a bit sort of a, a, an information signpost, um, targeting um, uh, plus fifty um, on where they might be able to find support and the programs that are available, uh, and play a role around sort of filling in the gaps where there's where people fall through the cracks, as it were, mm -hmm. on some key services. I presume is that what you meant? Or? Yeah. Yeah. And we were only interested in, in, in council service and NGVs, not interested in, in supporting private enterprise. Gotcha. Go get stuff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. I also Sorry if there's anyone here from them, but no, no, the um, a council <laughs> could have a role in going to progress clubs and saying things are going to change, guys. Yeah. And you're going to come and talk to us if you wish. Spreading the word. I'd like to just put a PS. Um, this is this is a program being initiated by the Commonwealth Government. And they are the chief funders. And with that goes responsibilities. So um, I agree to a certain extent about the council's role in population. I think it's very important for those existing service providers to be given as much information. But the, the new world is being run by my age care and the, cow, and the community that's sort of come on. So, I'll just go back to what's council's core business? Where do you want to go? Council has got a mission, a vision, and that needs whatever response to this has to align with what council sees as their mission. So aligning, aligning role around the council's broader Yeah, I, I just believe, because otherwise, um, 
like all of us, we all do fill the gaps. You know, we make up uh, when you're a community sector social worker or you're a, uh, a lawyer or, or um, a nurse in, in the community. We all make up. We all do that little bit. I want us to... That's, that's good, but the responsibility of the program and policy changes is that they have to go right down to the client and into the resident. And I, I feel that council just has to be very mindful and be careful of how much we offer. Because there's lots of heart, we know there's lots of heart, but you know, we could easily, whereas, yeah, we thought there was another one about that filling the gaps, maybe that's where the energy might be. Interesting, thank you very much. Final group here, did you want to share? Oh, um, yes, well basically, um, our group said very clear that council's role was basically to retain the status quo and to, to, to so fight for their little patch um, and also the role of council to expand services that they currently offer and spend money more wisely. Less festivals and more practicality. And council should get more information out. I'm mindful of what Margaret is saying that fed, uh, the federal government is funding this, and thank God it's not a shared thing because whenever, whenever funding is shared, mm. there's always cost shifting and mm. cost and blame. Yeah. You know, when you've got Sorry. the state government, this is health services. They're always stuck because you've got federal government and, and state government and each one mm. is pulling their own way and blaming each other for any lacks and whatever. So if it's fully funded by the federal government, yes, that's that's okay. I see that personally as a positive, but council is the best person to get that information out because we'll cl I don't I don't want council to get out of people's services altogether. Mm. If you do, yeah. it's it's the end of our community, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah, I really yeah, believe yeah. that. Because I think that, mm. you know, you are the, the nearest, you're the closest. Yes, get funding to, to put stuff out in, in different mm. languages and we know which community languages are required. Um, we know you your staff knows who they're servicing. All of that, I think, is very important. If you get out of, mm. of people services altogether, mm. you're just going to be another bureaucracy yeah. that people do not relate to. Mm -hmm. And I think that is so dangerous. Can, you, can anybody tell me what the council has received from the federal government being told what the federal government thinks? The council's role is. Sorry. Has, has the federal government said this is? They've obviously said this is what we're going to do. Have they? I, I read that question and said I'm trying to work out what the purpose of the question was uh, because I think the council has been told what their role is. Is that true? Um, so the Commonwealth find Victoria very unique because local government is actually playing in this space. So. It, it's not relevant in terms of other states and territories. Local government doesn't actually deliver in-home services. So they hadn't had to consider local government until Victoria said, hang on a minute, well, local government's a big player in this. We need to slow down. You can't roll out this national model because in Victoria we do oh, it differently. Different. Oh, OK. okay. In human services, Victoria is so much different to the rest yeah. of so, is, is so if you were to say to the Commonwealth, is local government important, they'd probably go, no. Yeah. <laughs> but is the money like the my aged care thing? That's the federal, right? Yeah. Does the money come down and be controlled between you uh, by the Victorian government, or does it come straight down to you? Yeah, from federal government. Okay. Yeah. So the federal government is saying the role of the council, or one of the roles of the council from now on, is that they will run the age thing directly for us. 
No, no, no. If the federal government's not saying, here's a bucket of money, guys, no, no, no. you do what you're doing now and do it better or do it however no, you want. No, they want to change the whole, they want I the wish. system to be national. Mm -hmm. so yeah. They want us to come into, Victoria to come into alignment with other states and territories where it actually has been rolled out and is operating. Uh, yeah. right. It's going, in, like going into the hands of the customer. That's the, yeah. that's the fundamental yeah. change. Rather than going to service providers of which councils in Victoria are one of those service providers. Mm -hmm. We're running a few minutes over time. Yes, uh, so we're about to just quickly wrap up. Um, so thank you very much for all this. So just to uh, tie it back, so today we'll, we'll um, take all the content from that's captured today, develop a, a short report so we know what's been said and uh, the ideas that have been um, generated here. Um, uh, these will uh, this uh, report will go into an evaluation process with council um, and uh, be opened up for discussion in, uh, uh, with the executive and councillors in 2018. And then by about mid 2018, we'll be uh, concluding on a, a, a direction that council is going to take. So, thank you very much for participating. Um, thank you very much. Uh, uh, wonderful contributions. I want to make sure we capture all those notes. That's the uh, uh, the, uh, the very important to make sure that all everything that's been captured. Also, if you don't mind, um, sometime during the rest of your session today, I've got little post-it notes. Um, uh, if you could just rate how you found the process today on a scale of zero to ten, ten being this guy's awesome, zero is don't ever hire him again, and uh, and then. I'm not trying to do any push poly or anything. Awesome. Awesome. And then just a statement as to a statement as to why you gave that score. Um, just this evaluation would be very good for us just to make sure we're continuously improving our operation. Thank you very much, guys.